Hey guys, welcome back to Mage Life. Hey guys, how you doing this evening? Well, sun's setting here in Mage Life, and well, today I actually had quite an adventure myself. Uh, last episode, I was talking to you guys. If you remember, while I'm on that topic, I'm gonna go ahead and say I'm sorry <laughs> for uh, basically having such a long episode and having it cut up so much. You know, I I, I don't mind having a few cut in and out here and there. Um, and I'm sure you guys don't either, but uh, last episode was kind of crazy just because of how much time I needed to squeeze out in order to make it a uh, desirable length for me. So I want to go ahead and say I apologize for that. Some of you guys might not have enjoyed that so much, but I really wanted to get the Arcane Olympics out and done to show you guys because I also said I wanted to get them done the next episode, which was the last episode. And I really wanted to actually get my dragon. I really wanted a dragon. She's a good girl. <laughs> I know. Anyway, so basically what's also happened today is that I asked, you know, why aren't any angry zombies spawning in, which angry zombies are part of Thomcraft. They're a entity or a mod, or mob, not a mod, <laughs> a mob enemy that spawns in due to Thomcraft. And I was looking and looking and looking, trying to figure out why this was happening. Basically, after about eight, eight hours of trying to figure it out, I came to the conclusion it was Biomes of Plenty. Biomes of Plenty actually wouldn't allow, uh, basically, compatibility with Thomcraft, which is another reason why we didn't have any silver, or that many silverwood trees spawn, or greatwood trees, especially on our journey over here. So that being one reason right there, and the fact that it didn't spawn any angry zombies in. So that was kind of a problem and I started looking and looking and just so happened uh, on the forum page and kind of passed it up but there is a mod that helps integrate Thomcraft with Biomes of Plenty which is uh, pretty neat so now we actually have <laughs> integration with Thomcraft and Biomes of Plenty so things that aren't basically have been spawned in yet that would be newly created if I went to a new area would probably spawn in Silverwood trees and greatwood trees, which is good now that we also have our dragon because now we can get there fairly quickly. And now, in here, we're going to start seeing some angry zombies. So I'm going to kind of run around real quick. I also made up some soul shards because uh, they're still a little rare to find a, uh, to, yeah, <laughs> to find an angry zombie more or less. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a couple of these. As you can see, I made up some more warded jars. We showed how to make those. I believe last episode or the episode before. And we're also going to be making something else today. But we'll make that when we get back. So let's go ahead and run out and see if we can't get a, a zombie, angry zombie soul. <laughs> Real quick. Alright, now you're going to notice my mini map. My mini map's got a whole bunch of red dots on it. And, well, a lot of other red dots. Finally, I decided to enable entities on our mini map mod. So now I can kind of walk around and try to find us the zombie that we're looking for. <laughs> this is not the zombie you're looking for. Yes, it is. We'll find out. So, Farm Crafter, as you can see, is actually throwing down a lot. Ooh, random crafting table for the win. Throwing down like a lot of these trees, and that's actually kind of cool because, you know, basically now that I think about it, I think one of the reasons why they lowered the uh, the food of basically. Almost everything, like steak, is like three and a half hearts or three hearts now to heal you. Is because of these trees. Because you can see there's one there. I didn't plant that. It just, it's just there now. <laughs> and it wasn't there before. But basically, you just come up to them and, well, when you get hungry, you just eat one. If you see one. So it's pretty neat. I think it's uh, pretty awesome. So let's not let that sway us too much here. I feel like Tarzan jumping in these trees. Thanks to our boots of the traveler. I love those. Nope, no angry zombie there. So we're looking for ourselves an angry zombie. We'll tell he's angry. You guys will know when he's angry. Oh, there's some ice down there. Gotta be careful. So hopefully we can find one soon. They're they're not super rare, but they are. Not, oh, there they are. <laughs> but they do spawn. Oh, I don't want to do that. Hmm. I don't know what this is going to count for first. Okay, good, that didn't count. There we go. I got him. So I should have one soul now with that. 
Angry zombie soul shard killed two so far. Sweet. That's what I wanted to see. All right, now we can actually take this and take it back and combine it with other ones and get ourselves a bigger tier of angry zombies. That way we can get some more zombie brains because we're going to need a few more or less for what we uh, want to do. Now we have that taken care of. See, there's another one right there. There's plenty of those saplings. They're just falling everywhere, it seems like. I don't know why. All right. Well, now that we're back, I basically have what I wanted done real quick. Got, also got ourselves a zombie brain. Let me give you some chicken real quick. We're going to open up our Thaumonomicon. And what I want to make is right there. We're going to make ourselves an infernal furnace today. So you can see this is a mystical construct. We're going to need obsidian, nether brick, some lava, and iron bars. And, well, I kind of already grabbed everything for us. Kind of know how to lay this out. I'm going to put this guy right down and smack dab in the center of this room. Because I think it might be kind of cool. And let's go ahead and get this guy built. So I'm going to show you guys how to build this real quick. Get our nether brick out real fast. Put these guys on the side. Like so. That goes up the side. Oh, chill out, zombie. You break down my door, I'm going to break in your head. There we go. The obsidian goes there. And place our iron bars right here in this hole in the front. We'll place our lava bucket right here in the center like that. Then we're going to take our wand of the adept and right click on it. Bam. Look at that. This is our infernal furnace. So basically now... All we gotta do, okay, dude, seriously, get out of here! All we gotta do now is find something to cook up in it. Let me show you guys how this thing works. It's pretty cool. I, I don't really know what to cook in this thing yet. I really want to save my clay. Herm. Really don't have a whole lot I really need to cook at the moment. Well, at least up here. And that spider's getting rather annoying on top of my roof. Hmm. Got anything in my bag. All right, well, we'll just go ahead and do this. We're going to convert a few pieces of cobbles or dirt into cobblestone real quick, and then we're going to go cook this into stone. Actually, I think we need to do that anyway. So let's go ahead and convert it all, because I think I'm going to need some stone anyway for some of the things I want to do next. Let's go ahead and hop in here. Is that zombie seriously up there? I don't want to fall in this. Yeah, that didn't feel good, did it? <laughs> so basically, we uh, throw anything we want in the top here. And you see it's going to sink down, and it's going to spew it out the front. There it goes. So right now, it's rather slow. But uh, we can make ourselves an arcane bellow and place them on the... Get out of here. Place them on the side, right here in these holes, you see. And if we place three, it's going to speed it up pretty quick, and it's also going to actually increase the efficiency of it. So, uh, say for instance, there's actually some special properties to this. If I went down and grabbed us some ore, and put the ore in here, it would have a chance of producing a iron nugget. Basically, you combine them in a crafting square, like all nine of these squares together, and you basically get another piece of iron. So it's another way of bomb craft, you know, basically giving you, um, oh, another friend here. <laughs> basically, it's another way of thumb craft giving you uh, more ores, or more ingots for your ores. So, pretty neat. Alright, so we have our soul shards there, but we have, I think we're going to be okay on zombie brains now. Alright, that's going to be okay. I'm going to let that finish. So let's go ahead and hop in here, open up our Thaumonomicon, and let's look about maybe making ourselves a warded stone indoor, something zombies won't be able to bang on all the time. Uh, first off, I think we're going to need ourselves some great wood logs, zombie brains, and some thaumium ingots. Luckily enough, I have everything we need now to make this, so let's just go ahead and get started. So I'm going to need six thaumium ingots, Two great wood logs, and we have ourselves a zombie brain. Go ahead and get our, this uh, set up here in the crafting square. There we go. We got it set up properly, as you can see everything down here. So we're going to need four Imperito, 
some Manchima and some Cognito. So we're gonna need some levers. Hmm. Might have to make some more. Don't think I got enough. And some Manchima, which is we can use redstone for. Probably won't need that much, but make sure we have some. And what else was we needing? Ah, that's right, Cognito. And we can actually get that from paper. And we only need two. But I am going to actually do four. So what I'm going to do first of all, seeing how now we have our awesomeness of our arcane alembics, we're going to come in here, we're going to grab our glass files, and get them on the ready. Put our water in here. I'm going to go ahead and throw in Wait, where are they? Uh, four of our paper. Basically, it equals up to eight of the water aspect, eight cognito, and eight of that leaf looking thing. And then we're going to release. Bam. So now they're all in here. Take them out. And we're going to fill them up. All right, so you're gonna notice we have eight cognito here. You also see that this is actually lit up. If you can kind of see it, well, it's it's drawing from the crucible, but it's actually supposed to be drawing from there. Uh, more or less, I think if I updated it by doing this. There we go, so now we can kind of see. You can see the little particle effects making their way over to the, uh, our, the infusion altar. Is that right, the infusion altar? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Uh, basically, so they're heading over there. So now we can actually utilize that from there without wasting flux, more or less. So, let's go ahead and keep ourselves doing that, keeping ourselves clean, more or less. So how much of the Barito do we need? We only need four. Hmm. Let's go ahead and make up four more levers real quick, which is going to be pretty easy. Need some sticks. We need more than that, so it's gonna get this piece of wood out. Always get that backwards. <laughs> Alright, there we go. So now let's go ahead and throw in our levers. So you see there's eight of each. Where's our one? Now we're gonna go ahead and release these into the Olympics. Now these things can actually hold sixteen but each file can only hold eight. There we go. So put you there, put you there, put you there, and you there. So there we go. So now we're getting some aspects built up, which is kind of nice. You can see we have some Emperito. And now we're also going to need one more bucket. Whoops, what happened there? Where's my bucket? Hello? That just, oh, that was a graphical glitch if I've ever seen one. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and do the same thing with the redstone. We're going to put eight of those in there. So you see there's eight and eight. We're going to go ahead and release that and pick that up with our files as well. Let's see, I think we're pretty much already full up on this side, so I'm gonna start putting some on this side. And let's go ahead and update this by putting in our Wand of the Adept. So now you can see, there's nothing in our Crucible. And we can basically now make ourselves an arcane door without using or sending any excess flux into the atmosphere. So there we go. Oh wait, whoops, <laughs> took out the wrong thing. Bentley, call me yourself. Now we have ourselves an arcane door. Let's go ahead and pick this up before they despawn. Thank you and... Oh. <laughs> oh, Lord. I'm losing my mind today. Anyway, nonetheless. Just right-click this down like any normal door. Now, if there was any other person in here playing with me, they wouldn't be able to get in there without a key unless I made them a key. So, right now, I can only get in there. Just like a normal door. <laughs> Pretty neat. All right, let's go ahead and put this up. One of our Thaumonomicons who we're going to need for an arcane pressure plate. I'd like to have one of these as well. Just because it looks spiffy. 
And I'll probably make some more of these up later, but I think... I think I might actually pass on that for now. We don't necessarily need it. Let's go ahead and make up the warded glass first. We can actually use some of that. All right, so now this is shouldn't actually require any aspects. It should just require V. So uh, basically just put, put our zombie brain in the center and we can make 12 warded glass. There we go. Now only this stuff, this stuff is basically explosion proof. So the only way that this can actually be broken is with a wand. There we go. Pretty neat looking glass, if I do say so myself. It's not super clear, but uh, as you can see, even with the pickaxe, even with my wand of excavation, this stuff is unbreakable. I could sit here all day on this, and this stuff wouldn't break. The only way this is actually going to break for you is if you grab yourself this wand, or a lower version or higher version of this wand, and right click on it, and you will get your block back. So unbreakable glass, pretty neat. I like it. Gotta love Thomcraft, my friends, gotta love it. Now we can also make that uh, warded stone right here. And this is also explosion proof as well. We can make some of that up a little bit later. We don't really need any of that right now, I don't think. Here's the keys that we were going to make, or we really don't need to make. Uh, but we also can speed up our infernal furnace Let's not worry about that just yet. Ooh. Let's make up ourselves a tallow golem worker. I think some of you guys are going to want me to make one of those. I think I already have ourselves a golem animation core ready to go. All we need now is some zombie flesh. Which I already have two on me. Uh, where does that go? Right there. So I'm going to go ahead and grab about eight of these. fill up our crucible and we're gonna go ahead and throw in our rotten flesh once that cooks up as you can see it's gonna be 32 of the meat 16 of that uh, dark skull essence and this will still make us some tallow as you see we got eight tallow out of that and we have 16 in there I guess I guess that uh, other aspect released, it shouldn't have. It should have went into these limbics. Huh. Because uh, half of it, you know, half of 32 is 16, so 16 and 16 had plenty of room to go in there. I don't understand. All right, well, nonetheless, we're going to go ahead and get this out of here. So you can see we have two of this. This is uh, Mortus. There we go. So now we have 16 more twos. I think that's how it's pronounced. In there, and we also have 8 magic tallow. Let's go ahead and put our golem animation core up there. And our tallow on the sides. Being a little graphical glitchy, or glitchy here today, I see. Alright, so let's go ahead and fill up our crucible real quick and now all we need is to put our wand in here get eight animus which is soul sand and eight victus which is basically food which I can use two of those which is also going to give me basically two fire which I would probably have to release into the atmosphere unless I added more fire in but I don't really see any need to do that it's just a little bit a little bit ain't gonna hurt right so I'm also gonna need what, eight did I say eight, eight of this so we're gonna put in the soul sand first, right? Eight, yeah. Because there's three aspects on that. And those all equal eight. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, fill this up. Knock this out real quick. Gotta grab us some files, empty this out. Place these guys over here. I wonder if this is close enough. Put our wand back in here. We'll see if it's close enough. Ah, it is. Okay. I don't know how. I don't know what the distance is, the block range is 
for the uh, jars having to be close enough to this, but it looks like it's working that far away, so I don't think we're going to have that much of a problem in here. Nice. Alright, so we still need another bucket of water. What is going on here? Graphical glitch is going crazy on me. Alright, now what else did we need? We needed, uh... Oh, that's right. Food. Oh. <laughs> Fail throw. Alright, so you can see there's eight in there. Eight in there. It's good to go. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and pull them out. There's our tallow golem worker. What's going to happen there, as you can see, our aspects also went into the Olympics this way as well. So what I'm going to do is empty this one out. I think, uh, yeah, you can't empty them out unless there's actually eight in there. So I can't really do anything with that until I empty that out. Now, if you want to empty it out, I'm going to show you. And, uh, and if you don't want to like put any more in there and you want to continue on with your magic and you just want to get rid of that, basically just hold shift and right click on it and that'll release it into the atmosphere. A little bit shouldn't hurt you too much, but basically what I'm going to do, now we have our tall tallow golem worker. I'm going to right click on our crucible with him. We should be able to right click on him. Now he says, if you give me a bucket master, I shall keep the crucible filled with water. All right, buddy. Here you go. So now he has a bucket, but he really doesn't know what to do with it. So we actually need to make him something. And let's open up our Thaumonomicon. And there's some blocks in here we need to make. Now, I just don't quite remember where they're at. Let me take a look around real fast. Nope, not in there. I wonder if I even have them made yet. Hope so. Otherwise, this would be all for naught. Gallomancy. No, it's not in there. I think it was in here. Nope. Clay golem. Nope. I mean, I think I remember the recipe. I just don't know if I have it unlocked. All right, guys. So it comes to find out that there was actually no recipe in the Thaumonomicon. It was actually just a normal shapeless cra or crafting. <laughs> Uh, recipe more or less so basically we just take some oak planks put a piece of wool in the center and we have some white markers I'm gonna take these guys and you see our water source here I'm actually gonna break these two back pieces here place those white right back there in the back and as you can see our little golems coming over here he's like now I know where to grab water from from our infinite water source here he's gonna basically fill up the, the cauldron come over here get another bucket full and he's gonna be ready for the next time so basically right clicking on him you'll see any color. So he'll basically go to any water source that has any marker set to it. Uh, I'm just going to set this up to white. As you can see, there's a little white, and it changed a little indicator on his chest there. So now he's ready to go take care of anything uh, with the, the infinite water source or anything with the touching water, basically, with that white marker. So uh, pretty neat. Now we have him taken care of. And we can actually make another one, and we're going to wind up making another one for the Arcane Olympics. We'll have them where he will take out all the Essentia and place them in all of these jars. We're going to take those uh, markers, and we're going to make some more real quick. And I'm just going to go ahead and show you. be easier that way, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and make up a stack of wood. Uh, give us 16 markers, actually 32. But basically, we're going to put him behind here like this. And once we get him made up, he'll know that he'll be able to put any aspects he needs to in these appropriate jars. And we're also going to put some more jars on top of this up here. So we'll have these guys probably going all the way around the backside here. Now, probably not going to have enough to go all the way around. Uh, but that'll work for now. So this is basically how it's going to look so far. I think it looks uh, pretty good. <laughs> and Aaron, let me go ahead and show you guys. So this is kind of how it's going to go. We're going to put jars on top too. And that way we'll have plenty of room for aspects and all the essentia and all that such in our Thomic lab. Now before we go, I want to go ahead and make ourselves up something that a lot of you guys have been wanting to make up. Now, I think a lot of you guys remember the old Thaumcraft and get this chest mixed up with the, the uh, was it that 
following chest or whatever, that jumping chest that would follow you. Uh, this one does not do that. This one sits still. So uh, we're going to make this. There is no jumping chest that follows you anymore. They, I think they took that out. But uh, we're going to make this guy, which is uh, not too bad to make. Just need some arcane wood blocks and trap door. So we're going to need, oh, we got that. And we just need one trap door. So we'll place this guy in here. There we go. Now we're going to need some Animus, some Modus, and some Vacuous. So we got eight Vacuous there. I think we're going to need four Soul Sand, I think, right? Yep. And we're going to need eight Modus. So we're going to need some more trap doors. So let's make some of those up real quick. I know there's other forms of Modus, but this kind of stacks too, so. As you can see, I don't really have a whole lot of room in my inventory. i got to clean it up after this. All right, so let's go ahead and be clean about this. So you can see there's 16 of the um, nature aspect, I guess. And <laughs> it's hard to remember all, right? all these aspects and remember the names for them all. Uh, usually you'll just remember the ones that you use a lot of. Like the other one is Modus. So uh, we're going to go ahead and take that out. Actually, hmm... Do I have enough to put that one in, too? I think I do. So we're going to put our eight bowls in there, too. I think I got enough for that as well. All right, here we go. Looks like we did our job. Our crucible's already filled up. It's ready to go. Let me go ahead and empty out our jars, or our files here into our jars. So we got our modus. There's our vacuous, and I think we got some of this right here. There we go. So these things can also, these water jars can hold about 64 of one aspect. So, just in case you didn't know. Alright, now we're also going to need our soul sand. I'm just going to go ahead and chunk that in there. Put our wand back in here, and there we go. We can make our hungry chest now. Any excess aspects are in here and I'll clean this up later but now we have ourselves a hungry chest let me show you guys what we're going to do with this so basically we're going to take this guy we're going to plonk him right down in front of our infernal furnace here we're going to hop in our miscellaneous bag and I'm going actually we already got some cobblestone so I'm going to show you guys this in action real quick we're going to cook up 16 cobblestone so we're going to throw that in there and watch the magic happen quite literally Ah, look at him. He ate it all up. See? There's the stone. So basically, I could leave this now, and, you know, more or less, it's automated. Just throw in what I need. You could throw in just about everything that you want. It can, I think it holds... I don't know how much it can hold. I haven't really tested it, but I, I threw a lot of stuff in there before, and it cooked it all for me. Uh, after, you know, right after another, so... I'm not sure, but, you know, we might test that out soon. We'll also show you guys some other stuff that the Infernal Furnace does, too. It makes those extra little nuggets for us from ores. But I think that's about it for this episode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you have any tips, tricks, or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. If you have any ideas for any other magical mods, we have some new ones coming up soon when we update. We're just waiting for our texture pack to finish updating. We'll be on our way to 1.5.1. That's it for me, guys. If you guys would rate the video, I'd greatly appreciate it. And until next time, we'll see you then. A goodbye.